This week, it's the Delegate Compressor by Pedal PCB. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, as always, remember to like and subscribe down below. This week, we are looking at the Delegate Compressor by Pedal PCB. This is an optical compressor circuit that is a clone of the Earthquaker Devices Warden pedal. Uh, this is a very cool pedal. There's lots of interesting stuff in the build. I did a build video for this pedal a few weeks ago. I'll link that in the description and maybe up above as well. Definitely check it out if you want to see how to put this pedal together or if you just want to see how a DIY pedal is put together in any case. Taking a look at the outside of the pedal, we have six different control knobs on the Delegate Compressor. We have Attack, Ratio and Release, Level, tone and sustain. So let's just quickly go over each of these uh, control knobs and see what they do in relation to the compressor pedal. The first two controls that are the easiest to go over are the level and the tone. Uh, the level is, in this case, simply a volume. Maybe not simply, but we'll get to that later. And then tone is here just pretty much a treble cut knob. So as you uh, turn it up, you're gonna get more treble. As you turn it down, you're gonna cut treble from the output signal. Sustain is probably what you would call the compression part of this pedal. Um, really, that's the, you know, the one that you would see on most compression pedals. You wouldn't have all these controls. You would just see a sustain knob. Uh, for more compression, you're going to turn up the sustain. For less compression, you're going to turn it down. Up top, we have three control knobs that add a little bit more uh, control to this compressor pedal. The first being your attack knob. Your attack knob basically tells you how fast that compression is going to kick in. So whether, you know, if you're making a hard strum on your guitar, are you going to be able to hear that initial jump or is that going to be compressed? The ratio in my mind is kind of like a blend knob. The higher up the ratio, the more that compression signal is going to filter in. The lower down, the, the less compression you're going to get in the pedal. And the release knob. The release knob is essentially how long it takes for that compressed signal to raise back up to the level uh, adjusted by your sustain knob. Um, I think it's all the way back is going to be a fast release, all the way up is going to be a slow release. Other than that, pretty common build for pedal PCB. You have your top mounted jacks, uh, your top mounted power supply, and again if you take a look in there, uh, really cool Nice layout, everything fits into this 125B case. Um, some interesting parts of the build that you'll see in the linked video is building the optocoupler with the diode and the light sensitive resistor. Other than that, pretty standard build. Uh, it took about an hour and a half, I think. Mind you, I did do a video on this build, so you could probably do it in a little bit less time, but uh, really cool pedal by Pedal PCB. So we looked at the outside of the pedal, we looked at how it's built inside. Uh, one thing I do like to do in a lot of my videos is go over the schematic. So that's the next thing I want to do. And I do want to say this is probably one of the funnest ones to look at. Uh, there was a few things I had to maybe relearn that I hadn't thought of in a while. And I do think that uh, this compression pedal schematic review is one that you might be interested in. It, it is really cool to see how these different knobs affect the circuit and how they're kind of really doing the same thing in just a bunch of different ways. So let's take a look at the schematic for the Delegate Compressor by Pedal PCB. So we're looking at Pedal PCB's Delegate Compressor schematic. Uh, this was a really fun one for me to go through and learn about. Um, hopefully I get a lot of it right. I know it's the first time I've done a, a compressor breakdown. Not the first compressor I've looked at, but the the first one I've done a breakdown on the channel so I hope you guys get a lot out of it and hopefully I don't mess too much stuff up. So as always let's start with the power supply section where we'll see some pretty common stuff by pedal PCB. So looking down here um, 9 volt input uh, this is what this effects board calls for so we're gonna have 9 volts here uh, that's gonna run through a current limiting resistor LED and a switch this is basically your on off light your on off LED um, you have a 1N5817 diode here, uh, that's just for circuit protection, nothing too crazy. And then we're going through uh, TC1044, this is actually a TC1044S um, IC or voltage regulator. This has been explained many times on the channel. Uh, it's essentially just a way of doubling that 9 volt input um, to make it 18 volts. So you can see here VCC is the output of the TC1044, so we have uh, 18 volts as our VCC for up above. Uh, just a few other things to mention, uh, the 
OPA2134 op amp that we're going to see up above that's going to be powered on an 18 volt rail which is uh, nice to know so everything's off 18 volts internally as well make sure to uh, check your capacitor voltages because uh, you don't want anything that's rated for less than 18 volts and then also uh, 47k 47k this is in series and we're tapping in between it because these are the same value this is going to be approximately half of VCC so if VCC is 18 volts, our reference voltage is going to be 9 volts. And I suspect uh, when we go up top, we'll see that our signal is going to sit on 9 volts. And that means our op amp is likely going to operate between 18 volts and ground. So now we're looking at the effects part of the schematic. It really centers around this OPA2134 op amp and the gain therein. Uh, you can remember with um, a compressor, we're really not trying to change the signal per se. We're not adding distortion or some type of effect. We're really just trying to squish the dynamic range. Um, the best way I can think of this is you want your loud sounds to be dropped a little bit and your um, quiet sounds to be brought up a little bit so everything is kind of at a simple or happy medium. With that, we'll take a look at the input. Um, nothing too crazy here. We have our 1 meg pull down resistor. We have a 100 pico farad uh, capacitor to ground and then a 1 microfarad coupling capacitor. Uh, essentially what this is just doing is making sure we have no DC runoff into the OPA2134. Uh, we have the aforementioned VREF here of 9 volts so we want to make sure that stays clean. Um, as the bias for our guitar signal. That's what that coupling capacitor is doing. And then the 1 meg and the 100 pico farad is just making sure that we have um, high input resistance into the pedal. Uh, that just makes sure that we keep the fidelity of the signal high. Uh, we're not losing anything. And then also uh, with the capacitor and the 1 meg, we're avoiding any popping sounds when we engage that three pole double throw switch. So I said the compressor really is all about the gain of this IC11 op amp. Uh, this is a non-inverting op amp. So the calculation for gain of a non-inverting op amp is essentially one plus the resistance in your feedback loop, which is deemed R2. And that would include R5, C4, the ratio and LDR resistance over R1, which is uh, the sum of the resistance of the sustain pot, the 22K and the 100 nano. And I could say impedance here because technically uh, when we're talking about the added uh, capacitance and resistance, it's, it's impedance, not resistance. That said, we know we are going to be able to adjust that gain by manually turning the ratio knobs or the sustain knobs. And then it's also gonna be dynamically changed by adjusting that LDR resistance, which is done by uh, a light emitting diode later on in the circuit. Looking quickly at the sustain knob here. So the way this is wired is if we turn up the sustain knob, we're actually removing resistance from R1. This is going to essentially increase the potential gain of this circuit because R1 is going to decrease. So just by way of the calculation, uh, the gain will increase. Similarly, if we turn up the ratio knob here, we're gonna short out uh, this B100K or this 100K resistance. So we're removing resistance from R2, and that's gonna also decrease the potential gain of IC1. In the case of turning up the sustain knob, uh, essentially what we're doing is we're decreasing the effect of the LDR. And as well, when we turn up the ratio knob, we're increasing the effect of the LDR. Moving on to the second stage of the circuit, it's really an envelope filter is what we're doing here. Um, it starts with a common collector, BJT, which is a MPSA 18. And what this is actually set up like is what's called a phase splitter. So this is essentially taking the signal that comes in on the base, um, copying it to the emitter and then copying it but inverting it on the collector. So we essentially get two of the same input signals but out of phase. After the signals come out on the collector in the emitter, we're going to do some high pass filtering. So that's done by the 22 nano capacitor and the one mega ohm resistor here and here. 
Um, these diodes are nothing really special. What they're doing in this case is uh, essentially cl they're clamping diodes. So they want to make sure that this um, DC bias here on the on the base of Q2 and Q3 never goes below zero. So it's basically just to make sure this stays forward active. After our signal passes through the high pass filter, um, it's gonna go through two more transistors. These are two N5089 transistors and essentially added back together. Um, the way we can think of what's going on here is we're averaging those two signals and as our guitar signal actually increases, the average of it decreases. So we can think of as our guitar signal goes up, the um, value at this uh, location here is going to go towards zero. And if we think about that and what happens when the voltage here goes lower, when the voltage here goes lower, that means from VCC to here has further uh, a further distance to go in potential, which means that we're increasing the current through this LED, which is the five millimeter white LED, which is butted up against our LDR. So as our voltage drops here, our light goes up. As our light goes up, the LDR resistance goes down. And as our LDR resistance goes down, the gain goes down for IC11. Similarly, we can look at the release and attack knobs as a way of almost capping what we can do with the five millimeter white LED. Um, if you think about it, if we add more resistance into uh, the release knob here, so that would be turning down release, um, we're going to decrease the maximum amount of current that could go through the white diode. So essentially we can't get this bright enough, so then we can't get as low of a gain. Similarly, if we uh, turn up the attack knob here, so we're putting more resistance in, if we're moving that second wiper to 0.3, we're going to increase the potential at the emitter of Q2 and Q3. If the voltage here goes up, that means the voltage at C is gonna go down. If that's the case, the LED is going to get brighter. So it's got a further way to go if we're moving that uh, voltage down. If the LED gets brighter, the LDR resistance is going to get less. And if the LDR resistance goes down, then so does the gain of this IC11 op amp. So lots of different ways to adjust the gain of this op amp. Uh, Obviously the dynamic part is done by the LDR and the five millimeter white LED. Um, the attack and release are more about adjusting kind of how dynamic that LDR is um, based on you know, how bright the white LED can get. Uh, the sustain and ratio are more direct on the gain of the 2134 op amp. So lastly, let's just take a look at the tone and output stage. Uh, if you remember when we went into our phase splitter here on the output, or sorry, on the emitter of Q1, we were going to get our signal from the base and non-inverted, and that is what we're going to patch through to the output. We're going to go through a coupling capacitor and then a passive tone stage. Uh, this really is a treble cut stage. The easiest way to think about this is if we turn the tone down, we're grounding this capacitor here. So we're sending high frequencies to ground. So treble cut, if it's all the way down, uh, kind of a flat response if we're all the way up. I know uh, Earthquaker Devices says it's a treble boost, but there's no active components in here to actually boost the treble. As for the level section or the volume of the uh, output, uh, we're using in uh, the second half of that OPA2134 IC or op amp package. And really the interesting thing here is it's not really a level or a genuine level or volume. It's more of a boost. So here we have an inverting op amp. With an inverting op amp, your uh, gain is going to be R2, which is your feedback resistor over R1. It's actually negative R2 over R1 because it is inverting. So we can think of here as a gain anywhere from zero, which would be zero output, 
to five times, which would be 50K over 10K. So uh, yeah, we have a basically a 5X boost here if we want to use it, uh, although it is inverting the signal. And then lastly, just through coupling capacitor and out to our amp. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that review of the schematic for the delicate compressor. Um, it was probably the funnest one I've done on the channel. It is interesting how basically all or most of these knobs are really just affecting the gain on one op amp and that's how you're getting your compression. But yeah, really cool. Hope you guys enjoyed it. So lastly, what I probably should do is give you some sounds for the delegate compressor. I'll be honest, it's pretty hard to demo a compressor pedal. Uh, I think you really do need to be in the room sometimes to hear it unless you're really got that compression effect cranked all the way up. Um, what I'm gonna try to do is kind of show you the effect of maybe stacking a compression pedal with say a distortion pedal. Um, what I really like compression pedals for is if you have a small amp like I do over here, uh, that you're kind of at bedroom volumes, adding a, a compression pedal into a distortion pedal really gives you that full almost louder sound at lower volume so i'm going to try to do that i'm also going to try to do just straight up um, you know compression pedals see if you guys can tell the difference i'll be honest there's not a lot to be gained there but i think it's still worth putting in the video hope you guys enjoy it and check out what the delegate compressor sounds like
that's all for this week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review of the Delegate Compressor by Pedal PCB. Remember to like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.